All right. So I know we went through this quickly, but we'll just do it again. Or is not or is not as important as and so it's not going to show up on the exam okay this is just i want you to be able to see the difference between two different types of compound inequalities one second let me pause this recording all right remember that or means we're taking every every solution set so anytime you have x something like this that's the solution set because it means it's every number that is one and that is bigger than one so that's the solution set for so for and we needed to find two different solutions um or sorry we needed to find only the numbers that fit both of the equations for or you can say it's true for this or for this okay so it encompasses a bigger group of solutions again we're treating them completely separately because of the or so now we just have five times the quantity x minus one is greater than or equal to negative five and we have the equation five minus x is less than 11. i just said and because there are two but it's an or <laughs> or set of inequalities now you're going to want to Distribute the five to the x and to the negative one. Five times x is five x. Five times negative one is minus five, greater than or equal to negative five. Since we're subtracting five, we're going to add five to both sides. Five x is greater than or equal to negative five plus five is zero. Don't worry. Okay, it's a zero. That's weird. It's weird to see a zero. You can keep, you can keep working with a zero. Okay, unless it's like zero X, then your X's have canceled out and you have to decide whether it's um, always true or never true. But it says five X is greater than or equal to zero. You can just treat zero like any other number. So that means we divide it by five, right? The fives cancel here, zero divided by five, zero divided by anything is zero. Remember, if we had five divided by zero, that would be undefined and no solution, right? But if you're taking zero and you're breaking it into five pieces, you just, each of the five parts has zero. Good. Here we have five minus X is less than 11. You feel free to switch these around if you're not sure whether you should add or subtract that, whether that five is being added or subtracted. Put the negative x in front of it and then think about what sign you would put with the five, okay? So that is, if it doesn't have a negative, it's always a positive. So we're adding five to a negative x. So you can switch it around if that helps you visualize what you should do about that. We're adding five, we're gonna subtract five. So we're left with negative x is less than six. Remember, we don't want the solution to have a negative x, we just want a regular x. So you can either divide by negative one or honestly multiply by negative one, it's the same, right? But anything you do to this side, you need to do to this side. So negative times a negative just becomes a positive x. Six divided by negative one becomes a negative six because positive divided by negative is always a negative. And because we divided by a negative, we have to change that sign. So now it is X is greater than negative six. We have solved that. And now I want to graph it, okay? Except I didn't, my ruler's on the floor, one second. All right. So we need negative six to show up and we need zero to show up. For the and inequalities, we were always between them, right? But, or it might not be exactly between negative six and zero. So our first one is X is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to means I get a bracket. 
and greater than zero is in the positive direction. Good, so that's my first one. Then I'm gonna graph my second one, which is X is greater than negative six. So it does not include negative six and keeps going, okay? If this was an and equation, we would only take this part, right? But it's an or equation. So our answer is, if I was to rewrite the answer on its own plane, I would only need to include the negative six. And there's my um, solution set. Good. It does not include negative six, and it's all numbers greater than negative six because it's all of this and all of this. Okay. So they don't need to overlap the whole time. Um, to answer the question about do I teach algebra, there is only one time I'm teaching algebra. I can, you can take the online class or I have a 10 a.m. class. Oh, which is this time. So that's good. Yeah. This semester, my college algebra is at 11 o'clock. But then there are live teachers teaching college algebra as well. So there's an online version where you just watch videos um, and go more at your own pace. There's no meeting time or there is this class. Exactly this class, same time, same room number. Um, we would just be studying college algebra instead of intermediate algebra. All right, same, we still have an or. So we're just going to take them individually. Negative 2x minus 5 is less than negative 3. We're just going to solve for x. It's negative, or sorry, a 5 is being subtracted. So I'm going to add 5. Do it to both sides. 2 negative 2x, right? Because those got canceled. So negative 2x is less than 2. Interrupt me if you have questions. Any questions at all? Like I said, this is a sh the next um, lesson is a very short lesson and not as important as this one. So, and if you have the questions, other people do too. So I'm dividing by negative 2 because I want to get x alone. Negative 2 times x divided by negative 2 will just give me x. 2 divided by negative 2. So this is x. 2, a positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative, and 2 divided by 2 is just 1, right? Then again, because I divided by a negative number, I have to flip that inequality. Good. So this is x is greater than negative 1. And then we just have 6x is less than 0. It's not, I mean, it might be a trick question, but you don't have to do anything special to it. Just divide by 6, divide by 6, treat 0 as though it's any other number. Now we just have x. You do not change the sign because it wasn't a negative 6. 0 divided by 6 is still 0. So now we have x is greater than negative 1 or x is less than 0. Let's graph both of those. Maybe I feel like I'm making it confusing by graphing them on the same line. So I'll start. Ignore that. I'll make them each their own graph. So here's 0. Here's negative 1. Good. So x is gr less than 0 does not include zero, so it's going that way, right? Here we have x is greater than negative one. It does not include negative one, so it's going that way, good? If I had to write the um, notation, interval notation, it would be parentheses negative one positive, to positive infinity, here it would be negative infinity to zero, right? Now, if I was to take those and overlap them because we said or, here's zero, here's negative one, okay? Notice that if you're, so we're putting both of these together. I'll make the lines longer. So this line goes forever in this direction. This line goes forever in this direction. So what does that mean if we're overlapping and we're including both of them? 
That means that our answer, because of this part, goes forever in this direction. And because of this part, goes forever in this direction. They only overlap here, but the actual solution, because it can be either this one or this one, the actual solution is negative infinity to infinity. It's everything. And so the way you would graph that is it just a graph that covers everything. Arrows both ways. All numbers on the number line. All real numbers, you can say. All right, any questions about inequalities? All right, we are going on to absolute values. So here's x, okay? If I put x within what are called absolute value bars, we are just asking what is the distance between x or that number and zero. Good. So if it were three, what is the distance between zero and three? Three units, all right, whatever my units are. So it's a negative three. What is the distance between zero and negative three? It's a little bit harder, right? So here I'll draw a little graph. Here's zero, here's x, the distance between zero and x is just x, right? Here I've got zero and I've got three. What is the distance between zero and three? You can just count it, zero, one, two, three, right? It's three. What is the distance between zero and negative three? So we're still on the same number line, but we're to the left of zero. How many units to the left of zero? Still the same amount of units. So it's still three. I don't know what X is, so I don't know how many to put there, but we can just count. One, two, three, three units. One, two, three, three units, okay? Uh, absolute values are always positive numbers because distance is always a positive number, okay? If the absolute value of x is equal to 5, then x is 5 or x is negative five. There are two possible answers that would both be true, right? Because the absolute value of five is five and the absolute value of negative five is also five. And you can also write it as x is five comma negative five. Well, I guess you should put in the negative five first because it's smaller, but you can just put a comma between each of your answers. Does that make sense? All right, so now we are going to solve absolute value equations. If A is a positive number in the setup, the absolute value of X equals A. If A is a positive number, then x is a, sorry, I put five again, or x is negative five, 
if I'll just change the x to 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. Or sorry, if the absolute value of x is 5, then x is 5 or x is negative 5. If the absolute value of x is 20, then x is negative 20 or 20. However, if that is a negative number, so if you had the absolute value of x is negative a, there is no solution. Right? Because absolute value is distance. So you're never going to have a distance that's a negative number. So even if that was a number, the absolute value of x is negative 14, no solution. Anytime you see it's a negative number, it has no solution. Zero is okay. Then your answer is just x is zero. But, so it can be zero, it can be any positive, but it cannot be a negative number. So how do we solve something if we have a variable inside the absolute value bars? What we want to do is isolate the absolute value bars, and then we're going to turn it into two different equations. So here, just like we said, absolute value of x is 5, then x is negative 5 and five. All right, so if I said solve, for example, solve absolute value of n equals 13, okay? Isolate the absolute value, and then to get rid of the absolute value bars, you have to set up two different equations where you have everything that's inside those bars equal to your original answer and everything inside of those bars equal to the opposite of that number, okay? Because there are two different answers, right? 13 is 13, right? And the absolute value of negative 13 is 13. We agree? So if we're imagining what n is, we know that n could be 13, right? Because the absolute value of 13 is 13. But the absolute value of negative 13 could also be 13. So n might be 13, n might be negative 13. absolute value of x is 4. So we're going to split it into x is 4, x is negative 4. Is that okay? And it doesn't even matter, it doesn't matter what you have here. So it could be the absolute value of x plus 1 is 3. Good. To get rid of those absolute value bars, you set it up twice. x plus 1 is 3, your original, and x plus 1 is negative 3. x is 4, x is negative 4. n is 13, n is negative 13. x plus 1 is 3, x plus 1 is negative 3. That's just what we do to get rid of the absolute value bars x over 5 in absolute value is 
uh, two. Good. To get rid of those absolute value bars, x over five is two and x over five is negative two and we're going to solve both of them. Does it make sense now, the first step? Why after you've isolated everything inside the absolute value bars on one side, does it make sense why you then turn it into two equations, one with a negative of that right side? So first step is isolate the absolute value. which will make more sense down here, for example, to isolate the absolute value, we need to add six. Now it's isolated. Now it's alone on one side, okay? So step one is isolate the absolute value. Step two is apply that if the absolute value is x is a, then x is negative a, x is a. Okay, we're going to apply that by rewriting it. So we rewrite it without the absolute value bars. We just say 6 plus 2n is 4, and 6 plus 2n is negative 4. Good. We solve both of those for n. So subtract 6, subtract 6, 2n is negative 2, divide by 2, n is negative 1. You can go back and check that the absolute value of 6 plus 2 times negative 1 is 4. So I just copied this and I replaced n with negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. So that is true. Same here. We're just going to solve it by subtracting 6, subtracting 6. But now instead of a positive 4, we just have a negative 4. So we have negative 10 is 2n, do the same thing, divide by 2, divide by 2. Now you have n alone is negative 10 divided by 2 is a negative 5. And you can check that answer as well. The absolute value of 6 plus 2 times negative 5 is 4. 2 times a negative 5 is a negative 10, right? So the absolute value of 6 minus 10 is 4 because 6 minus 10 is a negative 4. Ne the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. So that one's okay too. Any questions? All right. Again, here we want to isolate the absolute value first. This is not isolated, so we would not do 2x minus 6 equals 4, 2x minus 6 equals negative 4, because not all of this side is under the absolute value or inside the absolute value. So do not do that. Do that step after the absolute value is the only thing on the left and then change the right, okay? So the first thing we do is add six. So that cancels. We have the absolute value of two X is four plus six is 10. Now you can do it. Two X is 10 and two X is negative 10. x divided by 2 is just x. 
n divided by 2 is 5. 2x divided by 2, negative 10 divided by 2, x is negative 5. And then we can check them, right? We can say, sorry, for our first one, x is 5. Absolute value of 2 times 5 minus 6 is 4. The absolute value of 10 minus 6 is 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. Good. And then we have negative 5. The absolute value of 2 times negative 5 minus 6 is 4. The absolute value of negative 10 minus 6 is 4. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Minus 6 is 4. That is also true. So if you, if you know the number, you can just pull it out of the absolute value bar and make it positive. But if you have variables, we don't know what the variables are, so we make them into two different equations to solve. All right, example number three has set it equal to zero. So they're asking me, is there a number I can multiply by seven, take the absolute value of that number and get zero? We have isolated the absolute value to the left side. The second step would be apply the rule that if seven X is equal to sorry, the absolute value of 7x is equal to a, then 7x equals a and 7x equals negative a, right? But for zero, oh, sorry, it's an x. There's not an algebraic opposite of zero. So there's just going to be one answer. The distance from zero is zero, even if it's negative. So we have the same equation. So you can just do it once. 7x equals zero. Divide by seven. Divide by seven. X is zero. And then you can check that answer. The absolute value of seven times zero is zero. So that would be zero equals zero. So that is true. So you don't need two different answers if everything over here is just zero. Example four just helps us include a fraction. The rules about um, absolute values don't change if the fraction is inside the absolute value bar. The rules for fractions don't change just because there's an absolute value, okay? So same steps. First step is isolate the absolute value, which we have done. It is isolated. Everything on the left is within the absolute value bars. And then the next step, is to apply the rule that the absolute value of x equals a, then x equals negative a, x equals a. So that's what we're gonna do, sorry. So we're taking it out of the absolute value bars. We just have x over two minus one is 11, and x over two minus one is negative 11. Good, all right. So let's first get the fraction. Yeah, I think it's easier. It might be easier to move this and then deal with the fraction. But if you feel comfortable multiplying everything by two, that is also okay. So I'm gonna add one to both sides. X over two is 
12. Good. X over 2 is the same as x divided by 2. So what's the opposite of dividing something by 2? Multiplying by 2. x times 2 is kind of like 2x over x. Sorry, over 2 now equals 12 times 2 is 24, right? 2x divided by 2, those cancel, and you just get x is 24. 2 times x divided by 2 cancels out the multiplication and the division, which is why we did it, right? So x is 24. Is that okay? Another way to do it, right? We said x over 2 minus 1 is 11. We said if you don't like the fraction, you can take the common denominator and multiply each thing, each of the three parts in that um, equation by the common denominator, which is 2. So you can say 2 times x over 2 minus 1 times 2 equals 11 times 2. Putting the parentheses around different things each time. Parentheses around everything. Any questions? So if you wanted to get rid of it that way, that's fine. It'll give you the same answer. These cancel. So you just have x. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2 equals 11 times 2 is 22. And then we add that 2. So the x is alone. Add that 2 x is 24. So either way, you get the same answer. Here, add 1, add 1. So now we're left with x over 2 is negative 11 plus 1 is negative 10, right? Multiply times 2. Multiply times 2. Again, if you don't understand what I'm doing right now, please stop me. There's only one more example. Or just email me after class that you want some examples of this. That's also fine. x is negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. Good. You can check it. Negative 20 divided by 2 minus 1. Negative 20 divided by 2 is a negative 10. Minus 1 is a negative 11. The absolute value of negative 11 is 11. Here we have 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 minus 1 is 11. We're not going to do this one. Don't worry about that. That will never, that won't even appear in pre-calculus. <clears throat> All right, remember, isolate the, um, sorry, isolate the absolute value bars is the first step. These are not isolated because the eight is on the left. So we're gonna subtract eight, subtract eight, the absolute value of 3z minus 2 is negative 7. Oh, look at that. The absolute value of 3z minus 2 is negative 7. What should I do? Should I do this? Don't write this down. I mean, you can write this down, but you don't need to keep taking these notes because I'm just showing you something. All right, so I have a negative seven here. So I changed it to negative seven and positive seven. Let's try to solve it. Three Z minus two is negative seven plus two plus two. Negative seven plus two is negative five. Three Z is equal to negative five divided by three, divided by three. Z 
is negative 5 thirds. Here, add 2, add 2. 9 is equal to 3z. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Z is equal to 3. Yeah, should we check it? So if I put negative 5 thirds into here, 3 times negative 5 thirds minus 2 plus 8 equals 1. <laughs> 3 times Ooh, 3 divided by 3, good. So that just becomes negative 5 minus 2 plus 8 equals 1. Negative 5 minus 2 is a negative 7 plus 8 equals 1. Ne the absolute value of negative 7 is always a positive distance, right? 7 plus 8 equals, sorry, 7 plus 8 equals 1. No. So this is not true does not check out. What about if it was just three? The absolute value of three times three minus two plus eight is one. Three times three is nine, right? Nine minus two is the absolute value of seven plus eight equals one. The absolute value of seven is seven. Seven plus eight equals one. Is that true? Again, it is not. So neither of those answers are correct. Why? What did I do wrong? I didn't do any math wrong. There's something wrong right here. Or I might have done math wrong, but what we're trying, the mistake we're trying to find is right here. What should I do if I see the absolute value of 3z minus 2 is equal to negative 7? You remember this? Absolute value of x is a negative number, no solution. So you can have an, a negative inside the absolute value bars, but it will never equal a negative number because it's a distance. Distance can't be negative. So if you see this, you can just stop and say there is no solution that will ever come outside an absolute value bar and be a negative number. So you can just stop. And say no solution. Good. All right. That is all I have for. Oops, sorry. Um, that's all I have for absolute value. Our exam is on Monday, so you can um, come on Friday. We'll do a. Uh, yeah, just want to make sure. We'll do a review. And right now, I'm going to stop.